These patterns result from the interaction of various disturbances. They clearly show the interference effects that are a fundamental feature of all phenomena which can be described in terms of waves. The essence of the interference phenomenon may be better illustrated in a laboratory. Two distinct sources which vibrate in phase excite a fluid, producing progressive wave trains which interfere. The propagation of optical signals can also be described in terms of waves. In fact, interference phenomena can easily be shown using a point monochromatic source, an optical biprism, and a screen. The light from the source is refracted by each prism and split into two beams. Interference occurs in the overlapping region. The light seems to have come from two virtual and coherent sources, which are the images of the source produced by each prism. On the screen, a fringe system can be observed. The distribution of intensity of the light, measured with a photometer, is nearly periodic. If the other distances are fixed, as the distance between the two virtual sources is increased, the separation of the fringes diminishes. Moreover, the separation of the fringes is also reduced by reducing the wavelength of the light. These statements are only completely valid in the case of an ideal point source. A real source can be considered as one formed by many incoherent point sources. Consider just two of them. Light is shown coming only from the upper one and the lower one may be hard to see. The intensity distribution on the screen is obtained by adding intensities rather than amplitudes. The result changes with the separation of the two sources. For a particular value of the distance between the two sources, the light intensity on the screen becomes uniform. A source of these dimensions does not produce interference phenomena. By using a coherent and monochromatic source in the form of a laser, and by placing a biprism and a screen on an optical bench, it is easy to reproduce the interference experiment first conceived in 1820 by Fresnel. This is one of the most convincing experiments demonstrating the wave nature of light. An electron interference experiment performed with apparatus equivalent to the optical Fresnel experiment should demonstrate the wave behavior of electrons. In order to carry out this experiment, an electron point source, an electron optical device equivalent to the Fresnel biprism, and a means of detecting the electrons are required. 
The biprism can be made by placing a thin conducting wire between two earthed plates. The device is inserted into the electron beam. When a suitable voltage is applied to the wire, the electrostatic field which is generated deflects the electrons. This effect is analogous to the one produced by the Fresnel biprism on light. By using a modern electron microscope as an electron optical bench, it is possible to obtain both good coherence of the electron source and good enlargement of the fringe system on the final screen. A pointed filament is heated so that it emits electrons by fermionic effect. This acts as the electron source. The electrons are accelerated and collimated by means of a suitable system of lenses and apertures. The results can be seen on the final screen, or detected on a photographic plate, or by means of a TV screen connected to the microscope. The biprism is made with a very thin wire drawn from a hot glass rod and made conductive by the deposition of a thin film of gold. Once the wire is mounted, it may be inserted into the electron microscope and a suitable voltage applied to it. Let us now observe the experimental results on a television screen connected to an electron image intensifier fitted to the microscope. First, let us experiment with a very small electron current, that is, with a mean distance of some meters between the electrons. The electron image intensifier allows us to observe the arrival of each single electron on the screen. With such a small current, an apparently random distribution appears to be in agreement with the corpuscular hypothesis. Let us now repeat the experiment with a much higher electron current density. If the electron distribution were random, we should observe a uniform intensity on the screen. However, an inclined set of fringes due to interference appears. Under these conditions, the electrons behave as waves. One possible interpretation of this phenomenon would be to suppose that the fringes appear as a result of the interaction of the electrons with each other. This idea can be tested by working with a low flux of electrons, as we did at first, and registering the results on a photographic plate exposed for a long time. Once again we obtain interference fringes. From this we deduce that interference phenomena are not linked to the interaction between electrons but depend only on the behavior of a single electron and its interaction with the experimental apparatus. Therefore, we can say that each electron has interfered only with itself. 
Let us now increase the voltage applied to the biprism wire and therefore increase the distance between the two virtual sources. As in the optical Fresnel experiment, the fringe spacing should diminish. As we now see. This is conclusive evidence for the model we have adopted. The electron behaves as though it may be represented by a wave. We can best understand what this wave means by considering the interference experiments performed with low electron flux and integrated on a photographic plate. If we measure the blackening of the photographic emulsion by means of a microdensitometer, the blackening is proportional to the total number of electrons impinging on each region of the plate. If we talk about a single electron, the same blackening curve will give the probability that the electron will impinge at any point. These results tell us how we should interpret the wave theory of electrons. What the theory predicts is not the result of a single experiment performed with one or a few particles, but the statistical result of many events. The image we observe on the screen in experiments using a high electron beam current or that which we observe on the photographic plate with a small current may both be considered as the sum of many independent events, each due to the interaction between a single electron and the experimental apparatus.